Do you want to solve Sudoku puzzles lightning fast? Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned expert, I can show you ways to solve Sudoku puzzles in two minutes or even less every time. Let's get started. Greetings, friend. Tim Blake here. This is part one of a three-part tutorial on Sudoku speed solving. The goal of speed solving is to solve a puzzle as fast as you can. As a solver, the best way to do that is to simplify your decision making process as much as possible. We're going to borrow from the same methods that people who solve the Rubik's Cube do. It's called cognitive approach and it leverages mental shortcuts, also known as heuristics. Did you know that the Rubik's Cube has 78 total algorithms that will solve a 3x3 cube? Also, did you know that your brain, the human brain, can solve at most two to three decisions per second. And they only need about five to seven total decisions to solve the cube. The rest of that movement is just them going through an algorithm as quickly as possible. That's how they practice it. Now in Sudoku, it's going to take a little bit longer to solve because you have a different solution each time and there are more cells to solve. But I will show you how to drastically decrease your solve time by reducing the number of decisions you have to make. First, let me go through some speed solving basics. There are four strategies that you'll need from Sudoku to, in order to do speed solving. Those four strategies are the hidden single, the naked single, the pointing pair, and the claiming pair. Now, if you don't understand those, I recommend you go back and look at my medium Sudoku solving tutorial, and I'll cover seven of those strat seven strategies total. You only need the first four, the hidden single, naked single, pointing pair, and claiming pair. Uh, the other three you don't need for speed solving. Second, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the numbers in an ordinal fashion. And by ordinal, I mean numerical order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The reason why we're going to do that when we're solving is it's easy for you to know what number to look for next. It's easy to track what numbers you already looked at. If you try to just go and say, okay, this is the, where's the most number? Oh, I see threes the most. And then you go to threes. Oh, then I see fives. Well, then it's hard to go, well, where'd I go from there? And remember which is the next, that you make sure you've covered all of the digits one through nine. Number three, we're going to leverage visual cues from the software. Uh, I'm going to show you right now. With Sudoku.com, if you click on a one, what it'll do is it'll show and go down a whole column and the whole row so you know where a one cannot be. And so we're going to take advantage of that. So right here I can see there's a one in column seven and column eight and a row five. So then I know one either has to be here or here. Same thing, I can click on this one and I can see row seven, row nine. So there's only one spot left for a one. It's right there. The other thing I'm going to take advantage of is what's called saccadic eye movements. And what that means is your eyes don't normally roll across the page unless you're following a cursor. Instead, what they do is they jump. And Sudoku's nice is that it has these blocks set up. So you can jump from block to block and cover more eye movement with your peripheral uh, vision. And so that way, instead of like going straight across the road, just kind of jump from this column or this block to this block to this block. And you'll get through the puzzle much quicker. So for me, I can go down this block and then look over, see nothing there in these three, go up to this block and see there's two spots here and then one spot there for a one and you move a lot quicker. And then the fourth thing you need to know is that you're not always gonna be able to solve for every one in this puzzle. So for right here, you're getting to a point oh, where you can solve the rest of the ones, but let's move on to the twos. You're gonna to get to a point where you may not be able to solve all the numbers, you don't have to move on. So like for the twos, I can cut across row eight, there's a two right here. And then there's going to be a two right here. I'm just doing cross hatching, which we've studied. But then you get to this point, and you see, well, there's two places for two here, and there's at least two places for two over here, so I can't solve any further. That's when you move on just to the next number. So I'm just going to move on to threes from that point. Now, when I get all the way through nine, and I've solved as much as I can, then I'll go back to ones, and then the twos, and I'll try to solve uh, the remaining twos. Because at that point, you should have filled in some more spots. So, those are four speed solving basics. I call this method the ordinal solving method because we're just going through the digits one through nine as we solve, and we're not doing any other 
uh, types of strategies. Does this really work? Well, I'll put a link in the description below, and there's someone who solves a Sudoku.com easy puzzle in 42 seconds. And I'm telling you, that guy is only using the ordinal solving method. And you can follow along and watch him go from ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and doing those four techniques that I described earlier in the, in the video. So, let's try this out, and you can follow along with me as I do this to prove what I'm trying to do. And I'll just call the numbers as I switch numbers. So a way to, to see how the numbers fit, click on the one, uh, and it'll show it out in the column in the row. It makes it easier. So I can come across here, and I'm just going to start filling in the ones. And you notice all I'm doing is cross-hatching, and all the ones are done. And you go to the twos. And threes, nothing left with the twos at that point. And I can use a, like right here, I know three has to be in one of those spots, so that way I can solve for the three right there. On to the fours. And to the fives. And you see, if I see where I can't solve, I'm just moving on to the next number. You don't need to spend a lot of time doing you know, worrying about how to solve that from that point. And the sixes are done, sevens. And it's just claiming point in pairs, hidden and naked singles. Sevens are done. Eights. And you can see another well, you can solve that eight right there. Eight are done. Nines. And now we just go right back to the ones. Ones are already done, if you remember. Twos. I uh, still can't solve all the twos. Threes. And you see, you just kind of you work with the flow of your eyes to cover through all the numbers. Fours. And they kind of just build upon each other here. Fours are done. Fives. And you're starting to see now you're going to be filling in the rest of the blocks as we get to the very end. But as the blocks are filling, you actually have less to cover. Sixes, we believe I got those all done. Sevens, we got all done. Eights, we got all done. Uh, nines we got all done. So what's left right there? I believe we didn't finish out the twos. So two minutes and 30 seconds. Now, when you're watching me solve, you probably saw there's some spots where I could have deviated from the ordinal solving method uh, and just filled in a block really quick. Um, that and building upon this method is what I'm going to cover in my next video. So please stay tuned for part two. In the meantime, check out these other videos from my channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. Thank you so much for watching.